Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. In this episode, we're going to be doing Twilight Town, and like I said in the last episode, Twilight Town is full of cutscenes, and I'm really not going to have a lot of time to talk except for during like one boss fight, so I hope you guys enjoy this cutscene here at the very beginning of Twilight Town. <sighs> Where am I? What is this place? Oh, your majesty? You must battle me all alone. Against my dark powers. <laughs> What's this? Are you giving up? Finally ready to surrender to your fate? You're not the true Ansem. Oh. Mm. Your scent is different. The Ansem in my heart smells darker. The odor is more foul. But... Your scent just isn't that. It's not darkness. It's something else. I finally understand. You're the one who guided me, when it started. You came to me pretending to be Ansem. You gave me the card. To make me face the darkness. Hmm. That, that is, is correct. correct. Diz, or so I am known. You, I've watched you all along. Really? Who are you? And what do you want from me? For you to choose. Choose? You are a special entity. You exist between light and dark. You stand in the twilight. You are to meet Namine, then choose. Namine? Who's that? You will know soon. I know I said I was going to wait until the boss fight to really get going again, but I kind of wanted to talk about Diz slash Ansem, and I can't really go into too much detail, or really too much in general, because he is absolutely full of spoilers, and if I go into too much detail, I'll probably ruin, well not ruin, but spoil a little bit about the end of this game, and really the end of Kingdom Hearts 2 as well. Just know that Ansem, or Diz, is a really important character in the Kingdom Hearts universe, and he will definitely be rearing his head later on. But one question that that cutscene always brings to my mind is who was the character at the beginning of the game that unlocked the dark mode within Riku? I'm pretty sure it was Ansem Seeker of Darkness that did it because he wanted the darkness to come out of Riku, but now that we've seen that Diz has been helping Riku, I can see how it might be Diz. But of course we're going to be getting yet more cutscenes here and a boss fight. Maybe Namine is here. Hold it! <laughs> You've changed. Your own darkness. It doesn't frighten you anymore. How can you tell? Because I'm you. No, I'm me. I'm me, he says. Must be nice being real. A fake like me could never get away with saying that. That's right! I'm a phony! A fake! The way I look, the way I feel, everything I remember! And even... this newfound power! Huh? I thought by finding some new strength, I could finally be someone, someone who's not at all you! But... nothing changes. I'm still just empty! <gasps> Everything about me is borrowed. As long as you're around, I'll never be more than a shadow!
This, guys, is the final form of the Riku replica, so this makes, like, the eighth, seventh or eighth time that we fought a Riku replica in this game so far, if you count Sora's story. But speaking of Sora's story, it has ended by this point in Riku's story. It actually ended probably, like, two episodes back or something like that. Zexion said that the head of the castle, which is Marluxia, fell to the Keyblade Master. I just kind of glossed over it and forgot to mention it. But at the end of Sora's story, we saw that the Riku replica was almost like Sora's friend in a way. So I'm not sure if he didn't know that Sora and the real Riku were friends, which I find that very, very hard to believe, considering the fake memories that were put inside of, you know, the Riku replica. Or if he just didn't care about that or whatever. But he's not such a good guy anymore. But I think we've had this philosophical conversation before. Is he really a bad guy if all he wanted to do was kill Riku so that he could be real? I guess that's for a, you know, a later discussion. But here we're going to be getting the Riku card, which basically if you put cards in a slight, they will be available for use later on. But here we're going to be getting a lot of cutscenes, and I'm just going to speed up the running in between so I can keep the flow going. So, it's over. <laughs> Death doesn't frighten me. Good riddance to a phony life. My heart was never real. I'm sure even what I'm feeling now is probably all fake. What are you feeling? What happens when a fake dies? One like me. Where will my heart go? Does it disappear? It'll go somewhere. Maybe... to the same place as mine. <laughs> A faithful replica until the very end. That's... okay. you guys but to me that ranks within like the top three saddest cutscenes in this series but like i said before let me go ahead and speed all of this up Are you Naminé? Yes. I see. That was you. Huh? Forget it. Nothing. Please, come this way. Huh? Sora! What have you done to Sora? Nothing. He's just asleep. To get his memory back. So, Sora chose to forget about this castle, and get his old memories back? You have a choice to make, too. Why me, too? No one's messed with my memories. It's not your memories. It's your darkness. In your heart there is darkness, and in that darkness is Ansem. He may be at bay for now, but eventually he'll wake. And he will take over you just like he did before. But I have powers you can use. With my powers, I can put a tight lock on your heart. That way, Ansem could never come out from inside you. What happens to me if I let you do that? Will I forget? Everything? Like Sora? I'll have to. The darkness in you will be sealed tight just like your memory. You'll stop remembering the darkness. You'll go back to how you were. 
Riku, please choose. He doesn't even look worried. Will I sleep like that too? Yes. Figures. Sora always did as he pleased. Whatever we'd be doing together, he'd find a way to slack off. Even trying to leave the islands. I did all the work on the raft by myself. That's it. When this slacker wakes up, I'll tell him off. I told him to take care of Kyrie, and here he is just taking a nap. But I can't chew him out like he deserves, if I've been asleep. <laughs> I don't need my heart locked. I'm ready. I'm gonna fight Ansem. But what if his darkness overtakes you? If that happens, then the darkness will show me the way. Yes. That's true. <laughs> Why do I get the feeling that you knew I would say that? I didn't know. I hoped. I wanted you to face the darkness. Because you're the one who can. So that's the reason. That's why you came to my rescue inside that light. In the form of Kairi. When'd you know? I knew when I met you. You and Kairi smell the same. Look after Sora. Gosh, I guess you decided not to go to sleep. How'd you know that? I heard it from Diz. <gasps> Do you know him? Well, I'm not sure. Got a feeling that I've met him somewhere. Hey. Who are you? I could be nobody, or anybody. It is up to you whether you choose to believe in me, or not. Boy, you really like pushing decisions on other people. And you have pushed away slumber, making the choice to face Ansem. Do you think I'm reckless? You have chosen your own path. Are you supporting me? Or are you abandoning me? That will be your choice as well. What's this? The organization will pursue you. Like a pack of hunting dogs, they will sneak up on you if they sense your presence. However, this cloak that is worn by nobodies will render their eyes and their noses useless. The ears, not so. They wear this to give themselves protection from being devoured by darkness. Is it clear? Even the organization cannot rule the darkness. Doesn't matter. I won't run from the darkness. Hmm. The card will draw out your heart's darkness. Finish your business with Ansem. Come on. Let's go.
He said this card will draw Ansem out. Don't worry. We can defeat him together. Sorry. I've got to face him alone. But why? There's no point in doing this if I can't do it on my own. But I do need a favor. If Ansem is the victor, he is going to enslave me. If that happens, use your powers to destroy- Of course! I'll be right there to save you. Huh? No, th that's not it. I want you to destroy- No way! No matter what happens, I'm gonna be right there to help you. I promise you that. Unless you don't believe I'll come through for you. I choose to believe in you. Always, Your Majesty. And I in you! You're not gonna lose. I know it. Thanks. Well, that was a really long bout of cutscenes there, but we did learn a lot of information. Now, one thing I've always wondered is how Sora gets from Castle Oblivion in this game to Twilight Town at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm not sure if they ever really say. I know there's a report in Kingdom Hearts 2 that kind of talks about it a little bit, but it could be as simple as somebody like Diz moving them from Castle Oblivion to Twilight Town. That's just one question I've always had, and that cutscene with Riku, Namine, and Sora in that room with the pods always kind of confused me because we were already in Twilight Town, sort of, but we were in Castle Oblivion as well, so I'm not sure if there's a connection there that I'm just not seeing. But also we saw that Riku declined that lock in his heart that Namine suggested that would have kept the darkness locked inside of him, and I'm kind of glad he didn't because the rest of the series would have been pretty boring and we would not have a final boss in this game. But another thing that was kind of weird is that we got the Castle Oblivion level card, which we've never had to use before, because in Sora's story, it was just open. So for some reason, we have to play a card to open Castle Oblivion in Riku's story. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts, Rechain of Memories, and I hope to see you guys back for the finale of this Let's Play.